Hi, I'm Patty with Studio R12, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to stencil with rollers. I'm going to use a drill for not very much, but it was fun to hold it up and pretend. And I'm going to show you some really great backgrounds. You are going to have so much fun. Alright guys, today we are going to do a very DIY project and you are going to be amazed at how much you're going to learn about what not to do. So let's get started. Um, first I want to welcome you and thank you for popping in and sharing part of your day with us. Tell us where you're from. And we've got some giveaways if you're catching us on Facebook. Um, we're going to do two sets of our phenomenal brushes which I'm kind of not going to use today which is really weird. Um, they're great brushes but today we are going to stencil using a roller, so that's super exciting. And then we're gonna give away a Clapham's beeswax today. So that's our grand prize. So make sure that you like, share, and comment to get entered. And then let's get started. I wanna talk about this. This is a stove top cover. They are a big rage all over Pinterest, all over everywhere. Everybody has a stove top they don't like to, the looks of. Well, a lot of people have stove tops they don't like the look of, but it also is called a noodle board and um, the history of it is that people used to use this to knead their dough and to roll out their noodles and do the cutting and stuff like that. So what we've done is we've chosen one sheet of Baltic birch. We used a, um, an organic wood, meaning we didn't use like a uh, MDF or a pressed board because if you're gonna cook on this or roll on this or cut on this and do any of that, you don't want any of that coming into your food. So, and then we cut a piece on the sides and we used a little brad nailer to nail it down. And then, unfortunately, this is the part where I'm gonna show you like what you shouldn't do, okay? So DIY is super fun, except for if you're not like a professional, you might not know what not to do. So this board is warped, okay? So it's not gonna lay flat, and if you're trying to do stuff, it probably wouldn't matter too much, but I mean, when you look at the board, it like shoom, does a little curl right there. What you can do, there's a couple options. So I want to give you like the ideas of what you can do to fix things when they go wrong. Number one, you could sand the back side of it. You could take it back apart and plane it. Um, you could do some of those things. But the easiest thing I found was these little coaster feet. They're just little clear things. And I just popped one on there. If this is mine, I don't need to worry about it. If you're making these to sell, then you need to worry about that and you need to figure out how to make them flat. But now my rocking is done, so no problem. And then the other thing that I did is I didn't measure my holes for my, um, my stuff, my handles. These are just um, drawer pulls. And you, I saw a really cool one um, the other day. They used a spoon and they bent it and made the spoon the handle. I loved that. But I drilled the wrong holes and it was like, I was like, ah, why? Um, but what I did is I went ahead and, did I throw it away? Get in my trash can here. All right, well, we're gonna show you a fresh. So, and I'll have to probably show you without paper. All right, this second, so hang on. Take like a piece of my palette paper. What we did is we, we etched on, we graphited on the little post things. Okay, just scribble some of that on there and use the not slippery side and then you just press that down, and then it gives you the perfect little circle. And then we went over to our drill press and we made it the right size. And thankfully, this fits and it covers off my covers up my mistake. So sometimes mistakes aren't all bad. But yeah, when you go over here, then we took our um, we we um, graphited the other side, and when we went over here. We just traced those and it put the mark on the paper or on the, on the wood. So that's how you fix that. So that's how we fix silly mistakes. Today, what I'm going to show you is how to um, do this wonderful wood treatment. I'm gonna do it on both of the, um, the cross beams, but on this part, I'm just gonna and, um, do some sanding. Okay, so what we wanna do is get a foam brush. Poly foam brushes, they're the best. We're gonna get some black paint. And we have a wonderful, um, so these backgrounds are just so much fun to do. 
and we have some wonderful um, YouTube special um, videos that are coming up. So make sure you check out YouTube. Um, while you're there, subscribe so that you know when we do post things. I'm gonna put random black paint just here and there. And I'll probably go ahead, just put a little bit here and there on this. What I do, I do this for is so that in case I'm sanding, um, I want not to always have the same color behind it. It just kind of makes it look a little bit more realistically distressed. If you were doing a really um, faded um, technique like this in the middle, I would probably paint it before I put these boards on. So just FYI, that can be a problem. All right, we're gonna use the Clapham's wax. Um, let me blow dry that real quick. Make sure, let us know, say hi to Noelle. Um, let us know where you're from. Let us know how long you've been painting. I wanna know that, that's fun. completely dry. Hey, um, big, neat technique that we're going to show in a little while. I'm going to show you how to do drop shadowing with a round brush. So kind of an advanced skill um, set, but I think it's neat to know that you can use a round brush and what, like why you can. So I thought this would be a good video to show that on. So you can do it with your stencil or through your stencil, but you can also do it with that brush. So I'm going to use just some of the wax and I'm going to put it here and there and this is going to resist the paint. Let me kind of balance this with the other one. I want some coming off with black and some coming off with brown. And you don't have to, you don't have to make this raised up. Um, this can be flat. In this particular case, you could actually use petroleum jelly or, um, um, or like a other wax, but what we're going to do to make this food safe, because this is a salad bowl wax, we're painting on the wood and we're doing all this, we're gonna do our finish with the beeswax so that you can put food and things on it. So that's why you're gonna to wanna to use this wax and you might as well since you have it out. Sometimes there are very specific reasons why you need specific products. And food safe, if you're doing um, kids toys, you do any woodwork and um, you know, trays for them to eat on and play on and puzzle pieces, you want to use the beeswax to, um, to finish that up. We'll put our brush in the water. Always, always put your brush right in the water because um, if they get, let me see if I have an example. Yeah, that looks like one. Yeah, so they get these crusties on them. And what I did earlier, I was kind of having fun with it. Um, I just took the edge of my scissor and I just cut them off. So you can trim these until they disappear. Um, and even like on the edges, it's got a little bit, but if you don't submer submerse it all the way in the water, then um, it will get the crusties on it. So sometimes um, it takes some experience to know like why things are doing things. So now I've told you why and now you can avoid that. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna mix our whites. I don't want to have everything, um, I don't want it so bright. This is like a really bright white. So I want it to be kind of a warmish white, but I didn't want it to look too yellow. Okay. So make sure that you're like sharing and commenting for your grand prizes and prizes. We have so much fun sending things to our customers. Tell us what you're painting right now. Okay. Now we're going to go right over the top of this and it, it might pull. I'm not going to push on that very much. I'm going to skim. How many of you have actually used round brushes? That's a fun, fun information to know. I have, um, round brushes can be one of the, a frustrating brush to use um, if you've never used one. So I think you getting tips um, from somebody that's taught, like I've taught thousands and thousands of hours of classes in painting all across the country. So um, I've seen like what people struggle with. So I think that'll be helpful today. All right, so while that's drying, we're gonna take the same thing. We're gonna go right across. We're gonna change our direction and go the other way. 
And you wanna keep it basically straight. This is not so much, I'm not gonna do like a wood grain so much on this. I'm doing more of a, um, you know you're getting into your painting when you've got your arm on your hip and, and you dig in. <clears throat> okay, so get that based. We are, so I had one of my very, very, very best friends argue with me one day and said that there's no way that you could use a roller brush to stencil with because bleeding is just a terrible thing and, um, and there's, there's just no way. And she was, she was on vacation staying at my house and so I have a, a painting studio up at my house and so we went up to the painting studio and I proved it wrong. It's a neat trick. And if you have something, this is a pretty big stencil. I'll show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a monogram. So it's a big stencil. So we are going to use a big roller to make it happen. All right, so we're going to finish. I'm gonna bring my paint over near this. Big, big, big strokes. We'll just jockey back and forth a little bit. This was so big, I didn't wanna do a, a pre-board. So while we're base coating, like, let's see, what else can we ask? Has it warmed up for you anywhere? Um, do you already, um, have you already checked us out on YouTube? We have so many videos on YouTube. So many cool things. Um, I've got some things coming up um, that we're gonna do and I forgot one of the techniques and I went to our YouTube channel to find out how to do it. So like, I mean, I think that's a testimonial right there. Oops. Okay, now you can't really use hot, wax, uh, hot blow dryer to blow dry this dry, so it's good that I have to base this. I can, however, do um, a blow dryer in the middle section because I don't have the wax. I want to point out that this is the polyfoam brush. Notice that, like, as I'm going, notice that you don't see it, like, flopping down and laying down. That's because this brush is made way better than any other poly any other brush, um, foam brush that I've ever seen. Um, I've talked in other videos about being a brush snob um, and I never even had a foam brush in like my brush arsenal. And then um, one of our other friend teachers came in and she said, no, you have to use these. And I was like, no, I'm not doing it. But the other day on one of the videos, I took it apart. And it's the reason it's so great is because other brushes stop right here on that line and have just like a little plastic bit right there, but this wood goes all the way, it goes halfway, and then it has the plastic bit. So it's really constructed much differently. Okay, I'm gonna dry this middle. And something, um, when we were um, doing some of the background things that we've been doing, you know, I'm trying to be a little bit better about working ahead and, and doing some of that stuff. And, you know, so I had my boards prepped and, you know, we're doing just different backgrounds and stuff throughout, you know, filming and everything. And I was worked so far ahead that I had, my paint was so cured, I almost couldn't chip at it with my sander. So I would have had to like move to a, an electric sander and stuff like that. So you kind of want to do, when you're doing these chippy backgrounds, you kind of want your paint to be fresher. So don't work too far ahead because um, then your paint won't chip and it won't, you know, um, gouge out and stuff like that, like this beautiful thing over here. And you could do this with any color that you wanted. Um, that's what I love about these. These oh, what a great. Christmas gift for, you know, grandma or mom. Whew. Like that's the gift that, you know, you don't buy. These are expensive. Um, you, they're cheap to make, but they're expensive to buy. So, and then shipping, I can't even imagine what shipping would be. Um, so, you know, we're not offering these, at least not at this time, but easy enough to make it for, with some basic tools. Okay, and I'm gonna just brush mix that so I can get that based. But what a great housewarming gift. 
Um, you could put it away and do a Christmas theme on top of it. <clears throat> Pardon me. Don't forget we have tumblers. Mm. That tastes good. I've got peppermint tea in there today. What's in your drinking cup? What's in your Yeti? What's in your, what do we call those? Metal cups. All right, so that's about there. I'm gonna make sure with a big project like this you wear an apron because as soon, I think I've got my little tabs here have gotten paint on them because I'm right next to that. <clears throat> and then I'm not wearing the best sleeves for this either. We were talking about things that look better on camera and stripes do not look good on camera. Well, I love stripes, so I told one of our team, I'm like, they took out like half my wardrobe. I have nothing I can wear on camera. And then I've always got these bell sleeves and it's, there goes that half of the wardrobe. I'm gonna have to go shopping. And then this is something, um, with stenciling, um, I don't know when this happened at all, but I find that it is um, much easier to control what you're doing if you stand up. So make sure that you're standing up and you know getting some, you can get some muscle into it and stuff. I'm gonna use my blow dryer over here. I'll move this and I'm gonna stuff that brush into water. The foam um, poly brushes are another brush that's really good to have more than one of because once they get wet, they're not good for like two days. <clears throat> We're gonna get the blow dryer. My blow dryer has a cool button on it. So I can put it on hot and then hit that cooling button and it won't do heat. All right, so I think this is, I'm gonna blow dry the middle here. It's a really good time for you to tell us, like what's your favorite technique that you've learned watching us? Um, maybe share about the dome brushes if you like them and stuff like that. That's really good, like the other people that get on to the lives and um, we've got, we're answering your questions live. Um, they, they read what you guys say, so if you're telling people, um, you know, how great this is or, you know, never use this, you know, that's just so helpful for the, your friend artists, you know? I think I'm going to need to do one more coat before I start doing my distressing over here. Do, do, do. I had there. So a lot of times it takes about three coats. This is why we always do these boards up ahead of time because it's just kind of a drag to watch me base coat and paint. Um, there are right ways to do it. So notice I'm doing really long, um, long strokes. That is, if you do little things like this, you're gonna end up with this chop, 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 chop kind of thing. Um, if you do too much paint and don't smear it out, you're gonna end up with big wads and ridges. So really long strokes are the ticket. And I do like my oval glaze for base coating, but I gotta tell you, this does a better job. So um, the oval glaze is fine, it does it, but this is faster and easier. Rolling this would probably be faster and easier. What I don't like, somebody asked about that in, I don't know which one it was, but they asked why I wouldn't use a roller to base coat with. And the reason why is because, um, or to like stencil with, if you have more than one color, that's gonna be a problem um, because um, rolling and changing colors and masking would be difficult. But also I don't really like cleaning rollers. So I only pull them out when it makes the most sense to me big, big projects. Furniture is great to use a roller on. Something like this, probably a roller would have been a good idea. Um, didn't think about it, honestly. And then I buy the packs. 
a bunch of replacement ones. Um, these are just from the hardware store. We'll put a link down below. Um, sometimes if we have links down there, um, they can be affiliate links. So we have to say that by like law or something. So just know that if we link to something, it can be an affiliate, but it's just there for you guys to have. We're not gonna make a bunch of money on that. Okay. Get it even out. I'm gonna sand this too, so it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. I just want it perfect for me. And I wanna clean that up and then come back in. It's kind of making a little mountain out of a molehill over there. Okay, so I think, I think that's good. I've got like five <laughs> brushes, five foam brushes in there already and all I've done is white. All right, so now we're gonna do the fun stuff, okay? Um, this is what happens to your sanding disc when um, you do it with the wax. It gets really wax coated and it almost just skims over the top. When I change, see how that's curled up in there? <clears throat> when I change my paper, I cut those off and I save them and they look like this. And then I use them to clean up and go deeper and kind of gouge it more. So never throw those away. That's like little gold right there. And these things just happen because it's, um, because the wax. So I'm gonna move that over. Okay, and then we're going to go, I've got, this is a, um, this is one of those ones that is um, an affiliate link. It's on, I think it's an Amazon link, but these are magical. You want to absolutely have at least one of these. You can change them out. We have them for, um, we have light sandpaper for finishing, and then we have the 60 grit for this gouging technique. Um, I don't use these as much, so I don't think you need to, um, but it makes all the difference in your hand. Um, they can be very tiring to, to hold um, a sander like this. Um, and one thing that we are gonna watch, I'm gonna give this a little blow dry. If I get all these crumbs and they land on that wet paint, it's gonna stick. So let me get that a little heat set. So I'm super curious about, have you ever done this technique before? Have you done the chippy paint? Are you interested in doing the chippy paint? Is it something that goes with your decor? Like it's so farmhouse. It seems like it's everywhere right now. All right, so this has got a nice ergonomic handle and then I'm gonna just roll up my sleeves and dig on in. I just barely touch it and look what happens. Isn't that magic? So I can, Push on it more, but it gives it that beautiful, like I've been in weather for a really long time look. And you can see it's already starting to stick to the bottom of my paper. It's not bad. This one I put on thick and it was bad. Okay, but what it is doing is it's making, wherever it's catching, it's kind of making a smear over the top. Schmear is the technical term. So are you nervous to try doing distressing techniques like this? Is it new to you? That's, I think that's fun. I think the first couple times I did it, the first time I did chip paint was on a clock and I had a deadline, it was going in a magazine. And oh man, I came running out of my studio and I was like screaming and jumping for joy. I felt like the most mad scientist ever. Like it was exciting. To, to figure out how to make it look actually chipped instead of fake chipped. Okay, so now I'm gonna dig in. I wanna expose some of, under my black, I might wanna expose some of the brown from the actual color of the wood. And then maybe I wanna give it a couple more streaky streaks. Come up here. Let's give this one a little. See how that's revealing that lighter color wood? And we'll look and see. Come up at the top. So it's super easy to do, and it's super fun, and it takes out your aggressions on things, you know? You can just be like, yeah, let me distress that. And so say you absolutely hate it, right? Oh, this is terrible, I'm the worst distresser ever. 
Take your foamy brush with just a little bit of paint and then you can go right back over the top and you can mask it. So it's just like putting a little makeup on a spot you don't like on your face. So you can go back and you can give it some white and then you can go back with your sanding disc and do it again. So it's not like the end of the world if you don't like what you've done. Put that in there. Okay, and so I'll just go back and get rid of that. Okay. And then the part where we're putting our handles on, yeah, that totally stuck on there. I'll just sit. <laughs> Getting a little aggressive here. Excuse me. Hello, I'm back. Okay, so the part where we put on the handle, um, I'm not gonna go ahead and do this on camera because I'm gonna do it awkwardly. I'm not a very tool girl. So you would shove that thing on there and they're drilled really tight. And then you just go through the back and you put the screw in the back and then it's just awkward. Put it in there and screw it in and then that'll be nice and steady, okay? So I just want it to look like it's gonna be finished. All right, so now we're onto this part. Let me give it one more shot with the blow dryer. It's a little wet over here. So remember to like, share, and comment. And then remember that tonight we do the live answer session as well. Um, we do the recast and it's with live answers, so that way you can ask questions in real time. So we do that on Tuesdays on Facebook. If you're catching this on YouTube later, then um, go to our Facebook page and like that, and then you'll be notified when we do them so that you can get entered for the prizes. So the grand prize is the Clapham's Beeswax, and the other prizes are two sets of our dome brushes, and we give them away at the, at the noon and in the evening. And I think that's at nine. Okay. So now we're gonna put our stencil on. So we're going to get out the monster T-square. <clears throat> Excuse me. Clear our throat like no other. <clears throat> and there was a pencil. <clears throat> we'll get out another one. That's a little chalk, that'll work. Okay, so just gonna kind of eyeball estimate. So that's at, there goes the glasses, two and three quarter. More than anything, we want it to be straight. So that's almost, hello, can I get it? There we go. <laughs> Fresh paint, that's funny. It's grabbing. Okay, now we'll make the other one the same-ish. Check it again. Okay. We are ish straight. Okay, and then I, I tend to go, so a little bit I'm off center. So I could T-square that, but I'm gonna eyeball it. With round designs like this, you really don't have to be too square, but, um, Kind of centered is good. Okay, we're gonna call that. Get some painter's tape. Painter's tape is really dangerous to use. I mean, really dangerous on fresh paint. So, but using a roller without tearing, taping down is even maybe more dangerous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gent tape. <clears throat> and guess what? Did you know that paint is your best eraser. So if I peel my paint back, I can show you how to fix it because I've done it a million times. So just like pressure, I'm not gonna do it real heavy. So we're gonna get a fresh thumb in the paint. So this is a little bit different, not using stencil brushes. Our brushes are amazing. But I really do think that sometimes you just need extra tools in your arsenal and having a different, um, a different way to do big work is good. And we sell a lot of really big stencils. So having, knowing how to use them, you can do, you know, um, table runners, you can do really big signs and stuff like that. So it's good to have this knowledge, I think. All right, so the trick for how you do this. I'm gonna put my paint 
in a row right there. And I'm going to take, I'm gonna take three of these. <clears throat> I'm gonna make a runway out of this. Make sure if you are, um, we'll put a link below to our Facebook, to our YouTube channel, and then you can hop on over there and you can you know, give it the like and the share. And if you ring the bell, I don't know which side of the thing the bell is on, but if you ring the bell, then that gives you a notification on like your email or whatever, however you sign up, um, so that you don't miss anything. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on our roller, apply on our roller, and then I'm gonna push on that just a little bit. I want it in the roller. I don't want it sitting on top. It's not like base coating a wall. Okay, so I'm gonna move that in and out of it. Sometimes the rollers roll really unevenly when you start. And then the most important part, and I don't wanna do this on my project, and so we're gonna move it off of here. We are going to go right on here and we are going to offload. That is how you don't bleed under using a roller. Okay, telling you all my secrets. All right, so now we go on here. And remember, stenciling is a layers game. So I don't wanna go at this like, you know, I wanna just get a nice dusting on there. I'll flip it over to get control of the other side. Isn't it fun? It's very satisfying to use a roller to do this. And shall we peek? Okay. Ooh, perfection, right? That is absolutely perfect. Okay, we'll reload. Once you get your roller kind of loaded, you will not have to load as much paint. It's the first, the first roll. So you see what I mean? It's like, this is a lot of paint to do not very much work. So it's kind of a waste, but much big, a big time saver. Much time saver. Okay. I hope you guys are having fun. This is, to me, the best. Hanging out with people who like to do the same thing that you do, DIY crafts. Do you guys paint for you know, your house? Do you paint to sell? Do you paint for gifts? I think these make the best gifts. Because if you gave something that you personally spent your time and energy on, people are gonna know they're loved, right? All right. Okay, so we'll go around the corner. Isn't this just the prettiest little sweet stencil? And we have a lot of personalized stencils. So that's, that to me, <clears throat> that has my heart. It is so amazing to be able to put like your name on something or, you know, that makes it an original gift. There's so much like big box stuff. And now with, you know, different restrictions and everything that we've been dealing with, you you're not only restricted by where you can go and shops are shutting and bricks and mortar are dying and you know, malls are closing. Where can you get anything unusual? You gotta go to like three big stores and be able to shop. So by being able to make something and then put their name on it, oh golly, I think that's tremendous. Mother's Day will never be the same, Father's Day, right? Okay, so we'll give that a second coat. Stenciling is a layers game. The thinner your coats on your stencil, the more success you'll have. And now I'm gonna do something really weird you probably haven't done very many times. I'm gonna blow dry to get that dry. I'm gonna hold it down. If I blow dried without holding down the stencil, even though it's taped in two places, what would happen is I would, um, it would flop and move around. And if it flopped and moved enough, it might smear the paint that was wet. So I don't want to do that. And then um, if I didn't blow dry it, then what would happen is that was pretty moist right there. And it would just, the paint would just slide right off. It wouldn't stick to it or anything. <clears throat> 
Always repeat your steps, even if you think that you have everything under control. Always repeat the wipe off step, um, just, just to know I do it, and if I do it, then you know you should do it. Because I am, I'm the biggest rule breaker you probably ever meet as far as technique rule breaking. I do jaywalk, just FYI. I always tell the truth though. But um, yeah, so I like to break painting rules because I always think I know better. But um, if I won't break that rule, then that, you, you know how imperative it is. I'm like the litmus test for rule breaking. Okay, we're gonna do one last little load and that will finish this up. Laying down some paint. We've got, um, oh, our paint is acrylic. These are honey bottles. There will be a link down below. We have that question every single time. Um, we buy paint by giant vats and there's no way to put it out on your palette like that. So I didn't quite need that much more paint. However, I want it evenly on there. So I'm gonna flip this paper towel over and I'm gonna use the other side. Always, 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 always do that. Okay, now we get this. Isn't this amazing how fast this goes? I love using a roller. I hate cleaning rollers. <laughs> it's like a plus minus situation. You gotta really, you know, decide if it's for you. Have you do you guys use rollers when you are um, stenciling? Have you done it before? Did it bleed under? Was it a mess? Is the technique of rolling it off over here something that you learned today? All right, so I am gonna call that. This is very important. <clears throat> Everything's always very important for me. So these are full top baggies, okay? Not the Ziploc. Ziploc does not work as well. Um, and what they do is they, you put your roller head in there and then you roll that puppy up and that will stay for two weeks like that if you just make sure it's secured. Do not use a rubber band or anything like that because that will keep that shape and then you can just put that off to the side. So if you know that you're gonna use it later or whatever, then you have it to use. So now I'm gonna remove this. Um, the, the baggies, you could put them over the heads of your dome brushes as well. You could put your um, foam brushes in there while you're not, if you don't want the paint to dry. So we've said this before, but I think it's worth repeating because we always have new people. Um, paint drying is oxidation. So the paint is um, a plastic. And when it gets in air, the air makes it dry and forms it into that, that, that tough plastic skin. So that's how paint dries is air. So keeping any air from anything is what you wanna do. I'm gonna put this off to the side. All right, I'm gonna blow dry this. I have some bleeding right here in the middle and I'm gonna show you what to do about that. going to use if I can find it easily. I think it should be in here, but we'll see. Turn up this little gal around looking for the click eraser. There we go. All right, so this is a click eraser. We all have these in our office supplies, school supplies, and stuff like that. So you can use spit if you want to. Um, we're in funny times about body fluids, so we're just going to not so I'm gonna go right on down here where I've got some of this bleeding and I'm gonna use my click eraser on the edge. I'm just gonna erase them away. Oops, and remove my paint. I need a paper towel. Okay, so that is how you can remove anything that isn't where you want it. Okay, go in. I actually had quite a bit. I did not spend enough time on my paper towel. But knowing that you can fix it, I think is key. Let me show you another way. I think that it's neat to have more than one way to skin a, um, skin a cat. 
All right, so this is a round brush. Um, this is a good round brush. Um, there are really crappy round brushes in the world. <clears throat> and the one thing about round brushes is you want to treat them right. They never, ever, 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 I can say it many more times, ever, um, get set on their nose in your, in, on your nose inside your paint container, your water container. They get swished out and they get dried off and they can be laid on the side or they can be put in a cup with their heads up. But if you do them down like that, you are going to trash your brush and then your expensive good brush is going to be toast and you're going to be sad. Just letting you know. Um, so to fix, we're gonna show this. Um, also, these come with these little plastic heads and it seems like it'd be a really good idea to put that on there and to protect your paintbrush. Absolutely do not do that. Almost inevitably, you will catch some hairs that don't go in there and then you will make these like funny, um, funny loose hairs and they're terrible things. Okay, terrible things, I tell you. All right, so you can take your color and just on the tip of your brush, not very much of your paint loaded on there. It's not really a technical term. You just don't want to scoop. That will not help you. Okay, and then you can put your glasses on and you can go wherever you see something you don't really like and just go right next to it and it'll wipe them right away, whoops. And if you do that, oh, that's a spit. <laughs> that is, if you're drinking coffee, that is the best saliva ever for getting rid of boo-boos. Don't do it when you've been drinking red wine because that will make everything turn red. So yeah, we can go in there and we can get rid of them. And then I'll show you another neat. So now this is dirty. I'm gonna go over here with my, and even though that water is dirty, I'm just gonna slosh it, pinch it out. I will wash this when I'm done and then I will store it upright. Do not let your children touch these brushes. Do not let your husband know that you have them. Um, it is not a glue brush. It is, not, it is not for anything but nice things. Okay, now this is another technique that you can do. We're gonna move this so I can get at it. So say you had a couple of, you know, blobbles like I had. When you use your um, sander, you're gonna go right through stuff and it is going to take it away. So some of the confidence that I have when I'm painting is I know that it usually all works out, right? So I, I know that if I sand, I know this is gonna happen. So I think that's why it's the best thing I can ever do when we're doing these videos is to show you what to do to fix something. Okay, now we're gonna go for some gusto and some sanding guts. and We want these to like carry over. That looks so good, doesn't it? This is one of the good reasons for standing while you're doing this project. You could not get enough like oomph in it to be able to do this um, sitting down. Now, nope, somebody probably could. I can't. Okay. It's all kinds of goobers. I'm gonna need a vacuum session after this. Okay, so that leaf didn't get any love and needs it. I like the distressness of it. And then I had an example. So when we paint, we do not paint in a vacuum in the world. Um, I go and find really cool things and then I mimic them or I borrow pieces of them. I untie my apron. Um, but so I found a really cool example of this kind of paint look. And, um, and then what I do is I take it and make it the color I want, the technique that I want, um, and that kind of thing. So I go to Pinterest, be inspired. It's, it's perfectly okay. But the one that I saw, the um, background that I saw, it had some sanding going in the other direction. And I was like, what? I like never do that. So today I'm gonna. Let me 
think of that? I'm not, I'm not, I'm okay with it. I'm not in love yet, but I'm okay. So, here's what we know. If we do this, and we don't like this, paint is your great eraser, and um, then you can go back and you can put your white right back on top of that, and you could do it again. Say you totally biffed all of this whole thing and you didn't think anything was gonna save it, sand it a little bit to get rid of any ridges, put your white back on top of it and do it again. Easy fix. Okay, so I'm gonna want, let's go up in here. So where I was going with that though, is our rule is paint it till it's pretty. So if you don't like something, keep at it, do some layering and get it to the pretty point. All right, so I want a few more heavy sands. I wanna get that background. And we'll break through some of these leaves. I'm like trying to keep myself standing up. I'm pushing so hard. All right. So you can also, if you're um, getting, oh, that's got wax on it. If you're having some stubborn paint that's been blow dried so it's really cured, you can go into these little guys and they really cut in. I like that one. I think I like that one because it shows the black. There, that one's showing black up there, I like that. So you kind of step back, squint, decide if you love it. Kind of loving it. I think we need some more sanding through. I think in order to make it look really old, some of the stuff just has to disappear. So I hope these techniques are for the noodle board or blowing your hippie noodle because I think there's some good stuff here. I think it's neat, 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 neat stuff to learn. All right, and the last thing that we are going to learn is we are going to learn how to do drop shadow with a round brush. Totally, if you wanted, to not be a round brush person. I find the round brush is much faster, but I have a lot of brush control. So um, if you don't have brush control and you don't know how to use one, it can be frustrating. So there's that piece. If you don't want to use the round brush, what you do is you offset. So oh, that was a workout. <laughs> and they're like, so you line it up. And then if you want, get it lined up. I'm like the worst stencil liner upper. Okay, then you drop it down a quarter of an inch and drop it over. And then you would do your drop shadow color and then you would have to redo your black on your stencil. So if you wanna use that, that's how you do it. Drop it down, drop it over. If you wanna use the round brush, then we're gonna use some gray. All right, round brushes are, the way that you hold a round brush is kind of like a pencil, but your brush should always stand straight up and down. If you're laying over this way, it's not a pen, so it's not a pencil, it is a paintbrush. So what happens with this, um, you always add water to around anything, because it's gonna flow. So this is like a soda straw, okay? So what happens is, just like when you go and you plug the end of the thing, it'll feed down little bit by little bit, that's a soda straw down there. So when you have your brush straight up and down, it'll, act, it'll actually, this is a fun thing to do. Let me show you. Um, it will go, and it'll go and 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 go, because it's just feeding like a soda straw. Keep going and going and going and going. I'm not trying to do anything fancy, just trying to show you how far it'll go. So I can still keep going and going, right? Watch what happens if I load the same load and now I try to go and go, but holding it like a pencil. Okay, so we'll go over here. If I hold it like here, I'm already out. 
Like it's already no good. So it's the upright position is how you will get that to behave yourself. So I am very curious, like sharing and commenting, to get entered in for prize drawings and things like that. But how many of you use brushes, artist brushes? Okay, so I'm gonna reload that. This brush is on our website, and it is, I put the brushes that we use on our website, and I will not use or allow any brush that does not do its exact job perfectly. Like, they are vetted by me. They're not just there because somebody said so. Um, that I said so. So that's why they're there. And then I do see this one brush has a stray hair right there. So what you do is you either take like a palette little knife or let me get this little guy right there. And I'm just going to clip that off. Never try to straighten them back on there. Just take a little knife and cut it off or whatever. All right. So now I've got my brush loaded all the way to the top. And I'm, I'm kind of twirling it out to make sure it's not too juicy. You could blot it slightly just to not have a flood of paint and then you're going to do all the same sides or all the same unders you're not going to do some on top and some um, underneath and you're not going to do some on the right and some on the left you're going to choose one and stick with it that's what drop shadowing does so then we go on here and we're going to just out from the side follow the shape so and on this side, it would be over here. Reload in the liquidy paint. Give it a little blot. See how much faster that goes? And so that one's wobbly. Well, forgive me. Just go in and take it away. Put it back. Um, you're anchoring, anchor, anchoring your hand. So if you anchor your hand, you're going to have control. Some people used to do it like this, some people do it like this, but if you anchor, then you, if, so if I was trying to like do a tightrope, like, and not have anything to do anything, I couldn't do it, I couldn't do any control. If I anchor my hand, I can do short strokes. Notice I'm not trying to get all, I'm not, I'm not going all the way around, because I would lose it, it would not work out. So get a little bit more water. <clears throat> Reload my brush, and then continue. So do you think this is fun? Does it look like torture? I'm curious because, you know, I think just because we, I don't know, just because we're DIY doesn't mean we can't have paintbrushes. And um, I think that it's important to be able to use a paintbrush or to learn how. And if you keep your paintbrush it clean, and you don't let your kids use them, and you keep them upright, um, these brushes will last you for 15 years, 20 years. Um, I literally have paintbrushes that I have used over and over again um, that are 20, 30 years old. So um, you do not have to wreck them, you know, like you can keep them. And I have all sons, I have five sons. So that right there, pets, dogs, chickens, all the things, and do, do, do. Lost my track. I lost track of what I was doing over here. You know, I totally swapped sides. Ah! Okay, it's not a tragedy. So I did the top side over here. Well, I guess that's right because on this side it would. I think that might be right. I'm not a um, big logic skill girl. Okay, so but we will do that side on that same. Whatever you stick with, stick with that, and it'll be right in the end. All right, so a little bit more water. I hope that you're enjoying learning about brushes. Also, don't let your handle be wet. Um, that's a big, important thing. I think putting the drop shadow on there just really adds just a lot of um, richness to it. It looks like a more professional um, project. Okay, so big, long, swoopy things there, right? We're not going to do it all in one step. Just going to come on the back. We're going to go across over here just a little bit. I don't like that arch. Round things are extremely difficult to, um, to line correctly, but if you pull towards yourself, it's much smoother. Okay, and you just have to change the direction of your 
Now I gotta see it. This thing's a beast. I see why they needed bread on them. I think I have a glass top stove and I think I am gonna love this. Okay. Now this letter gets really busy in here, so I don't know if I wanna do everything. You guys loving the round brush? I hope so. Okay, let me come over here. Nope. nope. When in doubt, take it out, right? Now my water is dirt hay, and that could make a little smudge, but that would be a really good excuse for sanding. Okay, we'll do it again. I actually think I'm gonna to switch to under. And then switch to over. Okay, I like it. All right, the way we take care of this, we're going to rinse it. And I'm hitting the bottom, but I'm not smashing it on the bottom. And then we'll dry it out and lay it off to the side. And we have other sizes. They're small, medium, and large. I used the large. That was the number five. And so they're in different sizes. And these are also, I'm going to show you one more thing I should have showed you a hot second ago. Sometimes lettering can get really busy with, um, with the um, bridging and stuff because, like, you need a lot of bridging for things to stay together in a stencil. <clears throat> if you, without water, pick up some, something was wet, um, just flat, flat, flat load your brush in there, then it will do a flat brush technique. And then you can take this, and you could go over here and you could connect that bridging. Notice my brush is upright, and notice I'm not, oops, wrong color. I'm not going into it and trying to smash my brush. I am simply feathering in, and your eye will correct the rest. So that makes it a little bit less busy. So now I'm gonna wash my brush again. Never throw it in here. You can do that with these domes, you can do it with the foams, do not do it with the rounds or a flat or any, anything with this um, soft brush bristle. Okay, so for finishing, um, let me hit this with a blow dryer so I make sure I don't smear stuff. Oh, let's spatter. Let's do that. Okay, so we're almost at the end, so make sure you like, share, and comment. Go over to YouTube and show us some love. Um, if you like what we're doing, please put comments and likes and shares and share with your crafting groups for pity's sake. Um, there's not enough fun in our world. We have to spread this love. Okay, so let's spatter because I just think that we should. We're going to go into our water and we are going to grab, let's grab the gray. I'm going to waterify the gray because that's not really a word. I'm gonna smash my brush open. This is a rake brush. I'm gonna get a big handle brush and then I always tap off to the side because you never know what's gonna spatter off on your project, All right? And I'm gonna go into these little corners right here. And so by spattering up here, let me show you this on magic paper. If I spatter and never, you should never do what I just did either. Um, I carried my paintbrush fully wet with water across my project. Okay, if, I'm gonna go right here. If I spatter up high, it looks like snow and it kind of evenly does something. If I spatter, I'm gonna do the terrible thing. Carry that across. If I spatter in a line, I'm gonna turn my brush sideways. I can get it to go like exactly where I want it to go. If I anchor, I can get it to be really tight. So I use this for a technique like if I want, there's like a flower color or shape, I'll put that right in the middle and make it look like little like, um, what's the stuff the bees like bursting out of it. You guys can fill that into the comments. But you can really control by spattering this way. If you use a toothbrush, generally what happens is you get a trajectory and it doesn't turn out as pretty. So I really like the rake for that. 
and watch for um, brush videos. We're gonna have some brush videos coming up so um, you guys can learn more about different brushes and what they do. Because each brush really does like a lot of things. Like I can shade and highlight with these domes. Yeah, that's adding a nice little carry of color going around here. And it doesn't matter if it's getting on there or not. If I spattered and, well, say I carried right over, oh no, look what I did. Okay, I'm gonna get that ready to go. Just take your wet brush, take it off, no problems. I think the biggest step is to not panic, right? So if I want it a little bit stronger in that corner, yeah. And then I think a little touch of black in those corners would be good too. Not getting enough water on there because I'm traveling all over the place. You guys like spattering? Let us know if this is like your first time watching these lives. All right, so it's just deepening the color just a little bit. I think I wanna go one more step. I really want this to be like, if you're gonna spend a lot of money on this, um, you know, like if you were gonna buy it made for you, then you would want it to look really good. So I kinda want this to be all the way over the finish line. Let me get that dry. can stay wet a really significant amount of time. Um, so what I want to do next, and pretty close to last, except for I want to show you how to finish, um, is I want to do a little bit of antiquing. We're going to wet our brush. Uh, so right now, because I'm about to use this paper towel as a brush, I'm going to use it to spread paint around, um, it becomes my brush. Your fingers can sometimes be your brush too. I'm going to get just a little bit of this brown. I come on this palette, just kind of wiggle it around just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go and make some stuff dirty. And notice I kind of stay out of the middle of my board with stuff. But a couple smears wouldn't be bad. <clears throat> Oops, Ooh, that's a lot of paint. Okay, so we'll go in to the edges. I need another big towel. To use the back side of my paper towel to blend that. Isn't that fun? Such a great way to antique. And then you can round it off if you want to. So see how there's a line there? We don't want that line. That is ugly. So we'll just buff it out with the wet. I've got a little bit of wet on the back side. So say you hate it. Say you're like, oh my gosh, this is the worst ever then what do you do? You go backwards one step. That's, that's the secret to it, is you just go back one step and then you will um, be able to correct it with whatever you did just before. And spattering is the wrong step, so I kind of, that's not right, but the white paint would be the answer for this one. And I wanna keep my distressing just a little bit straight. And then just one more step, because we need one more step, we're gonna go I'm turning and I said I didn't lie and I'm lying all over the place. One more step. But we gotta paint it till it's pretty. Just sand just a little bit to make it look like it belongs to the background. So I don't know, I'm gonna go down here and see if we can catch this on camera. So right here, this is pretty solid, okay? And so if I break it up just a little bit with that sanding, it will make it feathered in and it will make it look like it absolutely belongs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
final, I think, not promising anything, final step is brush off all your crumbles. And I wanna get in there, just kinda give that little edge where all that paint built up over there. Give that little bit of a sand, it's a little rough. To protect this, okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your beeswax. Beeswax actually dries to a very hard finish. Make sure my brushes are not doing bad things. And so we wanna be food grade. We're gonna be rolling our noodles out on our noodle board um, or kneading bread, then we don't wanna put a bunch of toxic chemicals on there. So you take your paper towel. Um, a shop towel would be a better towel to do. You pick up a little bit of your wax and you're just gonna apply an even coat of your Clapham's beeswax. It is all natural, all the right things. Okay, and then you're just gonna apply a thin coat. You can buff it out after a day. You can do a couple of coats um, and buff those out. The feel of a waxed finish is unbeatable. You would not ever believe how elegant it feels. So we'll just go over the whole surface. And that is how we blow our hippie noodle making a noodle board. You guys, I hope that you had so much fun. Make sure to like, share, and comment, and we will see you the next time. Thank you.